going to talk about WebRTC, Matt. Okay. Now, I know that sounds like a snoozer at first. So WebRTC, what you probably think of it is you probably think of the video capabilities. And yeah. Turns out that's just one component of what WebRTC can do. Huh? Uh, it's, uh, it's a big part of it. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it is a probably the first use case of it. And WebRTC's video support is it's really great. So here we have a live video of me on my Bonobo's webcam. And I'm on a uh, website called webcamtoy.com. You can go there right oh, now. Cool. uses WebRTC. We're not using uh, anything fancier than see, there's no flash. That's right? that's a big thing right yeah. there. Yes. And uh, one of the things that I don't know if people realize about WebRTC is there's a, there's an API layer to it where you can actually like pull in the video and bring it through a canvas and things like that. So check this out, Matt. If okay. I click this normal button right here, it'll load up a whole series oh my goodness. of like photo booth cheese effects. <laughs> I like the one on the lower right there. The kaleidoscope. Yeah, that's pretty neat. The, uh, yeah, so you can, <laughs> so you can see is you can actually pipe wow. you can pipe Web RTC's video through. Look at this this one. Wah, wah, wah. Oh my wah, goodness! Wah, wah, wah. I'm like it's like, it's a like South a, Park. You're like a, yeah, you're like one of the uh, South Park Canadians. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I just the reason why I wanted to show this to you is because there's no practical use for this one. Oh, this is yeah. They're <laughs> extreme, extreme Chris. Humans, let me tell you about WebRTC. I, I am here to tell you about WebRTC. Wait, let me, let me find the sweet spot. WebRTC. That is awesome. That's going to be a meme. Can I we can just do the, can we do the whole show like this? <laughs> <laughs> Linux, everybody. <laughs> now the uh, audio listeners are missing out. But no, they're all like, what the hell? I'm in a God tunnel, audio listeners. So um, there is... A lot of fun to be had with some of the video effects, but let's talk about some of the practical things. Yes. So while we're on the topic of uh, video, I think this is a good one. Uh, let's talk about multi-party chat room. So okay. I've made a chat room. It's called Last Town, and uh, this is an open. Uh, uh, this is a website called OpenTalkRTC.com, and I just put the link in the chat room. Yep. And it's a multi-party chat program where you can have. Here we have one. We have one person who's joined us, but pretty soon it's sort of like Hangouts. You can have oh, a whole bunch of people yeah. join you, right? That's awesome, and, and they just pop right in. Yeah, yeah, and I, we, I don't think we've hit a limit yet. Now, a couple of things is Chrome and Firefox will both ask you for permission to use your camera before you do. Oh, and we got bumped. We okay, got bumped. Okay, so maybe we hit a limit? It, well, it, it, I think it's just a little, uh, I'll go back in. What was it called? Last Town? See yeah, if I last, can just re-enter. L-A-S Town. Um, I can re-enter. Oh, cool. wow, that's kind of neat. Okay, so it's still there. And I also have, uh, they've also had some fun. Like, I can do some effects here. Like, I've made myself sepia. I can make myself <laughs> blurry. Cool. See, it's not blurry. <laughs> I can Censored Chris, Yeah, right? I can invert the colors so that way nice. I'm X-ray Chris. Um, and <laughs> and we, we're, getting a, see, we're getting a big stack here. That's awesome. I'm just looking to join, 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 join. Yeah, isn't this neat? So, that's cool. Oh, uh, yeah, here's what's, here's what's really kind of cool about the way this is working is all of that is going through through a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Oh, We're not wow. all streaming through a server. So you're not pounding on a server. That it's, this it's a, uses a technology called huh. RTC Peer Connection. It handles the signal processing, the codec handling, the peer-to-peer -peer communication, wow. the security encryption, and the bandwidth management. So it'll automatically wow. scale. Now, you saw me. I just clicked the join party. Yeah. Yeah, RTC Peer Connection handles all of that stuff in the background, completely transparent to the user. Ooh. So you don't even have to worry about what's, how it's working, or, or what's happening there. Uh, and so uh, there's, there's a lot of features that are going to be rolling out. It uses VP8 on the back end for the video codec. You know, I just had a thought. You know how in Chrome you can actually, like, uh, basically turn any web page into a quote-unquote a web app, essentially? Yeah. yeah. Why oh, not yeah, create totally. a room? Yeah. Bam, boom, damn, you're done. You know, but maybe you don't want, uh, maybe you don't want mm -hmm. video. Well, the Mozilla sure. project is full in on WebRTC as well. In fact, the industry is in on WebRTC. The, the telco industry is oh. in on WebRTC. There has been WebRTC conferences. Well, this is a project called WeConspire.com from the Mozilla, I think it's from the Mozilla folks. Mm -hmm. At least it now supports Firefox. This is for like gaming. You give a link out to your friends you're playing with. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then it is, it's like, it's like a really watered down version of TeamSpeak or Mumble. Oh, okay. So it's not using, it's not using the um, video capabilities of WebRTC. Sure. It's using just the audio capabilities a web RTC. But when you're gaming, that's really all you're wanting is the audio. You right. just want to have a headset on and be like, okay, you know, we're taking the tower, whatnot. So I'm gonna, yeah. I'll put this link in the chat room. So I, to, I, yeah. I, I top, I, if I toss that in the chat room, so you can start to see people join. So <laughs> oh, there's oh, one of my oh. allies. Oh, and you can mute or t adjust the volume yep. of individual people. Yep. So you can have individual control there. Oh, oh wow. And you, can, you can hear us playing back through his mic. Right. right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> so this is also really good just for voice chats. So you're, with a web RTC, you're not stuck to video chat. You're like, okay, Chris, okay. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Oh, here's another person just joining. So each person 
and this is the HTML5 audio control. And so Again, the, and the audio's all together. It's like in one big bucket. It's, yep. Oh, okay. But I can turn down individual folks. Oh, that's great. Cool. Right? So there's another person that's, that's just neat. Joined. Somebody say hi in here. Anybody in here listening? Hello. 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 Hi. So, okay. So okay. That, look at how many people were How cool oh is this, gosh, right? Gosh, that's awesome. And now let's, let's drop all of them. <laughs> so uh, there, there's there's specific video and audio components. That's Conspire. Uh, okay. Here's a here's a really good like more of a visual. Here, so oh, okay, wow. if you look, I'll maximize as you can see it. It's asking along the top here. Do you want to allow access? So I say sure. yes, allow. And then there is a way a real time waveform <sighs> analyzer of the audio that my <laughs> microphone awesome. is picking up. I okay. could record it and I could download it to my machine. I like that. I think that's neat. Oh yeah, you see, that? see it's yep. picking it up. Yeah. So that's gives you a little example, and they're doing this through an HTML5 yeah. canvas. So again, no very flash. Cool. Very nice. Uh, but you know, I I would consider that to be interesting. But that oh, I think the webcam one was more than interesting. I think that's waiting to be really hard. Yeah, I mean, I that's agree. If done right and properly implemented, and a few other things, eventually it could be definitely a Skype killer. I want to turn it up a notch, though. Okay, that's not enough. That's not enough for you. Not enough. Not for enough. Me. I okay. I feel like if that was all this was, that would be an interesting an interesting new technology, but it wasn't going to change the world. Now we're going to get into the part that changes the world. Okay. Let's world start Let's stuff. start with screen sharing. Oh. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal. Oh, it is. But it here is, is on another computer in the studio, my Bonobo's screen. And I just put that link in the chat room. I've already tested this. You can have dozens of people watching my screen in real time. I want to back up. Whoa, WebRTC Whoa. is using Chrome to do a real-time live video stream, not using any flash, not using any particular service. And you're able to take... Just by having the browser open into that URL, you can take other non-browser applications, oh, yeah. drop it in front of that, yep. and it's being screencast. Oh, my God. It's a awesome. little choppy over here. That's Sometimes the, it can be a little that's choppy. Okay. But that's okay. You can, you can see it over there. It's it's still quite reasonable for a screencast. Actually. Yeah, so here it is on another machine in the studio. That oh, one's God. a little choppy. For, li for live demos and such? Oh, that's oh. awesome. Well, and here's what's great. So there's no a new service coming out. Uh, that uh, There's going to be a lot of sites that can be built around this yeah, kind of technology, right. and this one is called Same I.O., they're new. They're in. They're in super limited testing. I I, uh, I got permission to talk about this on the show because it's still very much in beta. Okay. But you go to oh snap, oh snap. See, oh, it's beta. Snap. It is beta. Yep, yep. But okay. so you go to same.io. All you have to do is have a modern version of Chrome or Firefox. You mm. click share my screen mm -hmm. after you create an account. Sure. And it w generates a URL that you can share That's out cool. with anyone. And <laughs> And there's a little awesome. button at any time. I can stop sharing my screen if things yeah. get a little weird. So it's not like I'm locked into it. I love the lack of plugins feature. Right. No, no plugins. <laughs> I love right? that. I love and, that. And I want to back up here a second. This would also work on Chrome if, uh, yeah. I don't know if it's Chrome beta on Android, but there is a version of Chrome on Android. You can use all of these WebRTC features. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Your camera, awesome. the screen sharing, everything from the tablet. Finally, you don't have to root your phone to screencast from your right. Android. Oh, God, that'd be nice. So uh, we're starting to see what is an, wow. a, a new, a, a, an interesting component of WebRTC called RTC Data Channel. That's cool. And RTC Data Channel allows for the peer-to-peer -peer exchange of arbitrary data. Peer-to-peer -peer oh. exchange of arbitrary data. So take a game. You got a, okay. you got a, you got a, you got a space game called Jank Wars here, mm -hmm. and you need to tell. I, when Matt and I are playing Jank Wars, yeah. Matt's at home, and I'm here at my house. He needs to know where my spaceships are, and I need to know where his spaceships exactly. are. So you could use this data channel to transmit something like that. Or, oh, wow. Oh, I get what you're saying now. That's you crazy. Check out this service called ShareFest. ShareFest, <laughs> Sharefest <laughs> is a peer-to-peer -peer file exchange oh, service built into the web application. Can't stop the signal. You can't stop the signal, Matt. So oh, my God. So let's, 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 uh, let's uh, add a file here. And so now the, the trick is... If you share something with ShareFest, you got to leave your browser tab open because sure. you're, it's a peer-to-peer -peer exchange. And that's reasonable. Right. Yeah. But I want to take, uh, let's go find that uh, clip I played from Bruce Schneier earlier during uh, uh, the uh, pick segment. Okay. Uh, and it's a 131 megabyte file. And I'm going to just drag it into here. It prepares the file. Mm -hmm. it, it goes through a process of analyzing Pretty it. Pretty quickly, I might add. Not bad. Yeah, yeah not bad. And then it's going to generate me a URL. I hand out this URL to the chat room right here. And it's already providing you with share options right out of the box. Yeah, too. that's cool. So here you go, chat room. Download this file. That will pull the file <laughs> so directly awesome. from, hopefully it doesn't kill our live stream. Yeah. That will pull the file directly from my browser to them. But here's the brilliant part. Because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, once a few of them get the file, so uh -huh. there you can see I have one peer. I'm connecting at 700 megabits, or oh, I'm wow. sorry, uh, kilobits. Once they have the file, 
they become a seeder. So it's got oh, some elements wow. of BitTorrent in it as well. That's cool. And you could really think about ways people will be able to distribute media files in yeah. the future directly to each other, right? Again, I, that's why I become less and less scared about the whole podcasting patent thing because there's, these technologies are evolving. And here we are, like, hey, four you know. peers. I'm now almost sending two megabytes That's a second. Uh, hopefully, we're not killing the stream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now I got so at 1.6 megabytes a second. Four peers. We're not going through any server. Wow. We're not. We're not Man. relaying through any server. That's. We're that's just awesome. directly, and it, it has all happened. We're all just using our web browser. That is so. Uh, yeah. It, so no plugin. Nothing new is installed. You're literally going to a web address. Yeah. So this. This web RTC data channel, this RTC data channel, wow. and this RTC peer-to-peer -peer connection so cool. is a huge aspect to mm -hmm. web RTC. I'm going to give you the game changer on that one. Yeah, right? that's a big, big deal. Here it big is. Deal. Here it is actually applied to something that could devastate oh. an industry potentially. Oh, wow! Well, it, 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 would, it would backhand it. That's for sure. Yeah. Peer CDN. Oh. It is a peer-to-peer -peer content distribution network powered by web RTC. So everyone who's browsing wow. the site also becomes a distributor of the site. Again, a la Torrance. This could become wow, that's a crazy. Discount budget. Yeah. Now maybe it won't be as supercharged as Akamai or Scale Engine, but or it something becomes like very that. practical. It becomes essentially what Linux was in a Windows world. You it can becomes, flip yeah. it on if they support yeah. it. They become part of the CDN. Uh, it right. uses that. It uses that web RTC data channel. I, and even for businesses, I mean, honestly. It makes sense financially. I mean, why not? If you could just turn it on. Right. I mean, why so, would you pay for this? Peer CDN utilizes web RTC data wow. channel to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection between the site's visitors. Chrome and Firefox already support web RTC, which together account for about 58% of global browser usage. Mm -hmm. However, if a visitor running IE or Safari lands on the page, then they have the ability to gracefully fall back to un for unsupported browsers. You can also integrate hmm. to traditional CDNs for those browsers if you want, or just have them. There's your, there's your sign right there. That's what you would do if you're a business, right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's see how our, let's see how our, uh, our uh, we now have five peers. <laughs> Nobody's completed it yet. So I'm curious to see what happens when somebody completes it. So yeah. you guys stick with Whether it. Whether it drops off or if you continue to share, maybe. Yeah, how that yeah. Works. I'm, I'm really interested to see how that works. And you see also they've built in G+. And Facebook mm -hmm. and Twitter. Yep, yep. So I could just hit that and share that URL on G+, and everybody who has a modern browser could just start downloading that file. That is crazy. Yeah. That's just, that's so cool. There's a, so there, cool. Is, um, there is a lot, I think, that could happen here. But now, here's your caveat. You okay. ready for this one, yep. Matt? I'm ready for the whole... I've, been, I've, I've used the word peer-to-peer -peer about 100 times. Yep. However, oh. unfortunately... There's a cloud. You do need a server. Mm. Um, you need a server yeah. with WebRTC for the signaling aspect of WebRTC. Sure. So the way it works is you got your both ends, and different. You have different conditions. You have people behind NATs. You have people on public addresses. You have people with crazy firewall mm -hmm. rules. You need something that sort of brings everything together. Right. So Google has. Uh, uh, this is Google's really been the champion of this. Oh, I can imagine. So I can see them using the hell out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what the server does is the server helps negotiate what codecs are going to be used between both ends. It helps negotiate what security keys should be used. Okay. The network route to take, e.g., are you behind NAT, are you direct? Sure. The protocols uh, that you can use with the server are very mm -hmm. flexible. It could be JSON, SIP, XMPP. So you're not like locked in anything specifically. The, um, and it also supports... Uh, it also supports um, setting up uh, uh, web, you can use web sockets or, or Google Cloud Messaging to do the initial notification or XHR. Seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. Now once, all this does is this just establishes the session. Okay. It never, it never relays the data packets. So it, it's uh, just establishing the session only, right. nothing else. Okay. So then you have two components to this. You have stun and turn. Stun is web, it's WebRTC uses stun uh, to, for clients to just say, hey, what's my public IP? I need to know what my public IP is. Can you tell me? Get you so through the whole NAT thing. The WebRTC client goes out, touches the, the stun server, and then gives you that. Then you have the turn server. The turn server is used by WebRC to provide a cloud failback if peer-to-peer -peer oh, fails. Right, which matters. You kind of want that. Yeah, sure. So you can, but now it means you're using the server to relay for the bandwidth, right. but it also makes yeah. it work in almost every environment. It, it's, it's a double-edged sword, but I think it's a necessary one. So. Now, WebRTC will always prefer the peer-to-peer -peer method than the cloud fallback cool. always. It looks for both at the same time. It uses mm -hmm. something called ICE, where it goes out and figures out, should I use the cloud relay or should I use peer-to-peer? -peer? And okay. it tries to figure that out both at the same time. And if it comes back that peer-to-peer -peer works, it'll always go with that. Like that. Google has propped up a test server. I have that in the, your, in the show notes, where you can go, you can just bang on it using Google's test server if you want. However, 
because I know you guys are a do-it-yourself kind of crap. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. You can also just roll your own WebRTC server. There's, there you go. Problem solved. So like Jupiter Broadcasting, if we wanted to roll out like that, that multi-video window for calls. Yeah. Or... Which would be awesome. I mean, you can also, because, because WebRTC supports standards, you can actually integrate it with things like SIP. So I've been experimenting with a call button. You add a call button to your website. It uses WebRTC to, right. to, to, do the, to handle the voice and the connection for the user. Sure. Connects to SIP on the back end, uh -huh. which then, you know, your SIP service could go out to a POTS line. Absolutely. You could actually, so, oh, man. You could actually make a one-button phone call. You push that button on your site. It'll actually dial a phone number in the background and connect awesome. so like for customer service. Right. It could be huge. For websites and whatnot, that'd be a big deal. Right, yeah. but maybe you don't want to use Google servers to do that, sure. so you run your own stun and turn server. Mm -hmm. And the good news is it's available right now. The, it, it's got a catchy name. The server's called RFC 5766-turn-server. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there are packages available in the Arch repo, the Fedora repos, the OpenSUSE repos, the Debian repos, Ubuntu Everywhere. repos. It's, the, the, the server you need to do this is already in the distro repos. So it's totally doable. So if you were going to host something like this anyways, you could just mm -hmm. throw this up. And you could make this available to folks. That's so awesome. All right. So, uh, man, we still don't have anybody that's completed a download yet. Really? Well, it was, I guess, you know, it was 125 megabytes. It was. But I was kidding. And keeping in mind, we, you know, we got a lot going on here as well. So. Who, us? Who, us? Who, us? No, 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 no. Now, there's, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot to take in with WebRTC. But I want to just kind of end on this note that we all think of WebRTC as the, as a way for Google to improve Google Hangouts. That's that's kind of a, that yeah. was my pre-assumption yeah. that I had made. Uh, but in reality, WebRTC is it's it's really about enabling real-time communications yeah. RTC between web applications. True. And anything that needs real-time communications is going to take is going to benefit from WebRTC. It's not just about video. It's about file transfer. It's about information distribution. It's mm -hmm. it's about enabling my browser to talk to your browser directly, which on your terms. Fundamentally enables a whole new class of applications. And because all you need is a modern browser, Linux is there. Well, and I'm sitting there thinking about like the whole uh, the, the chat interview scene and things of that sort. I think that's so awesome because it's no longer, okay, do you have Skype installed? Well, you got to make sure that's set up. Well, you know, no, just go to this URL, man. Plug it, your camera in. You're done. I mean, you saw it. I it just handed just, out the URL in the chat room. Pop, pop, crazy. pop, pop, pop. Oh, and by the way, the show notes we're using, yeah, just go to that URL. Well, you just download it, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, oh, and the, and the chat room, you know, you just go to that URL. I'm, you know, three tabs and you're good to go. <laughs> it, it is. It is really cool, cool. and it it is. You can you can just you can you can embed the video. So like yep. you could take the chat sessions. You can embed it in your site as an HTML5 video element, and people could just watch the stream in there. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna enable a new type of distributed downloads. Love it. it. It's going to completely re redefine the at least the lower end CDN market, which I think mm -hmm. is ripe for the picking. Oh, absolutely. And the file transfer aspects of it could be huge for like, it makes. It, it makes it gives you the advanced features of BitTorrent without the complications of BitTorrent or the stigma. You know, I mean, yeah, maybe th so. that too as well. So I mean, the CDN side of itself, just on its own, if you have that fallback of traditional CDN as well as this for people that have enabled browsers, that's pretty awesome because that's a cost savings. I think it shakes up the market. Now, all of these, all of these, are in early days, right? Now. Oh yeah, we're very alpha. Yeah. You know. Yes. However. This is going to be huge in 2014. This is one of this is one of these last episodes where we cover something like Docker or something yep. like that, and you're like, "Oh, that's interesting technology." And then six, seven months later, yeah. you start to see it rolled out in everyday applications. I mean, think about the when you have tablets and cell phones, where every single device has a microphone and a camera. The hardest thing now about doing a conference, which is crazy easy, is picking the right app. Setting up your your contacts, yeah. and you know, and when we do interviews, we run into this all the time. Did you send us your contact info? What's your what's your yeah. nick on it's Skype? Like Skype's not showing up, or, or Google Hangouts. That's even better. That's even more of a headache. Um, oh, forget it. And and what I love about the screencasting option that you were showing off earlier is that, at least from my experience and my understanding, in order to do that now, you actually have to root your phone. I don't mm -hmm. want to root my phone. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried it from the device. I wonder if I can only grab the Chrome screen, or if it could grab everything. Because if it could grab everything, that'd be man, awesome. yeah, that'd be really cool. <laughs> oh. But it's, it's nice just from like a, you can start it up yes. and you walk away. Yep. And then when you connect to it, you can connect to it at any point. Then it starts the encoding process. So it's not, it's not slamming your CPU just to run the application. Right. Yeah, and it's nice. Yeah, it's, That's it's, a feature in itself right there. It's very impressive. So I think WebRTC will in enable, you know, we talk about on Coda Radio sort of this trend where Google's really pushing people to use web apps. And they it, are. You know, there are a lot of adva advantages. There's a lot of disadvantages. Yeah. 
This, I think, eliminates a lot of those disadvantages. I think the disadvantages are covered because of the fact you can, in fact, run your own server. Or, you know, there you go. it's kind of cool. We'll see what happens. Same. We'll keep an eye on it. But, you know, I think WebRTC deserves another look if you've been kind of shrugging oh, it off yeah. like I was. And I'm thinking now, like, how am I going to integrate this? Right. Yeah, it's like, how can, I get, how, how can I totally do this? And I can see some... How can I integrate into our courses. downloads? How can I take yes. live calls with this? How can I maybe one day replace Skype with this? Because, you know... The fact that it's once the connection is established, the fact that it's peer to peer is mm -hmm. going to a lot of times provide you with better video bandwidth and all of that kind of stuff. That's right. And uh, there's a lot of interesting um, development tools built into Chrome where you can get stats and stuff. In the show notes, I've linked to an ebook that is free, that is the second edition nice. that gives you a ton of information about WebRTC if you want to look into it. And I've also got linked in there about a 45 minute uh, Google I.O. presentation on WebRTC that is really fantastic. They go through, uh, they have some really good slides that I, I've linked to in the show notes too that help you work through some of this stuff. And they've got even more demos in those slides, including uh, some examples of the code. The, you know, I'm not a developer, but sure. the JavaScript code required to do some of this stuff is really straightforward. Like I looked at some of this code and said, yeah, you know what? I could figure that out. I could drop that in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. okay. And you could see it like, you could see how easily it's going to be rolled into WordPress plugins. Right. And, you know. Or, yeah, that's a big one right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just getting started, Matt. So 2014 yeah. is going to be the web, the year of WebRTC, I say. It will. All right, Matt. Well, that's the Linux Action Show's look at WebRTC. <laughs>